this video, we will discuss steel connection design using the ETABS program. The design check of steel connections is seamlessly integrated within the ETABS program. Steel connection design consists of calculating the connection forces or stresses and then comparing those calculated values with acceptable limits. That comparison produces a demand capacity ratio, which typically should not exceed a value of unity if code requirements are to be satisfied. So let's take a look at the program. So the steel connection design can be found underneath the design tab, steel connection design. And we'll go through all of these. We'll take a look at the preferences. We'll select some design combinations, go through the design check, as well as the interactive design. And we'll also take a look at some output. So the program output can be presented graphically on the model or in a calculation sheet prepared for each connection. Each presentation method output is in a format that allows the engineer to quickly study the stress conditions that exist in the connection. And in the event the connection is not adequate, aid the engineer in taking appropriate remedial measures. Okay, so first of all, we'll need to set some design combinations. So under define, we'll go to load combos. Here you have the ability to go ahead and add combos manually or add default design combinations. This is a steel frame building, so we'll select steel frame design, click OK, and you'll notice that the combinations have been added automatically. Then under design, steel connection design, if we click on select design combinations, we have the ability to pick and choose what combos we wish to have included in the design for strength as well as for deflection. Okay, so how are these connections defined? So these connections are generated automatically by the program when the design procedure is executed through the menu, design, steel connection design, and we'll go ahead and start design check. We'll do that here in a minute. So the program detects the joints where two steel members are connected and generates the corresponding connection if the adequate conditions are met. So those conditions include that the elements must have assigned material steel type and one of the supported cross sections. So which supported connection types are we looking at here today? So if we take a look at view revised preferences, there are a few different options available to the user. Beam to beam, beam to column, as well as column footing. So let's dive into these. Let's take a look at the beam to beam connection. So the beam to beam connection assumes a single plate bolted to a secondary beam web and welded to the primary beam. The connection is capable of transferring shear forces only. The plate style can be set in four different ways. Partial depth, full depth, partial depth with top, as well as horizontal plate. So by default, the program automatically selects the plate style based on the depth of the secondary beam and the user-defined limits set in the plate depth schedule. For example, with the default values, plate style is set at horizontal plate for beams lower than 10 inches in depth, full depth for beams higher than 30 inches in depth, and partial depth for all other cases. The necessary coping dimensions for the flanges of the secondary beam are automatically computed. The horizontal coping is calculated based on the width of the main beam, while a standard 2-inch vertical coping is applied in both the top and bottom flanges when required. Next, let's take a look at the beam column connection. So again, there are four types of beam to column connections here, depending on whether the beam connects to the flange or to the web of the column, and whether the connection transfers only shear or shear and moment forces. So here are the four options available to the user. So for shear connections, the design assumes a single plate bolted to a beam web and welted to the columns. For moment connections, in addition to the shear plate, the beam flanges are attached to the column assuming a complete joint penetration weld. So here we have the ability to update all of these different variables including number of bolt columns, bolt column gap, as well as the length bolt spacing. Lastly, here is the column footing connection. So for this, the column to base plate connection assumes a rectangular base plate resting on a concrete surface. The column is considered to be welded at the center of the plate with four anchor rods, one in each corner embedded in the concrete. Column to base plate connections are created in columns that have support assigned. Depending on the magnitude of the reaction forces, the design is divided into four different scenarios. Tension only, compression only, 
compression in small moment, as well as compression in large moment. So you'll notice if I click on any one of these variables, you'll see that the description is loaded. You'll see that the description is located in the top right hand corner of this dialog box for any one of these options. Now that we've done that, why don't we go ahead and run the design. We'll take a look at this in plan view. Okay, so now after the design connection procedure is executed and completed, the program displays the controlling demand capacity ratio for each connection at the corresponding end of the associated frame element. While the results are being displayed, the user may right-click the frame element to display the results form. So let's go ahead and do that. We right-click here. You can see for this specific connection, here is the results form. So as you can see, it'll display the design connection, the design parts, as well as a unique 3D view here. You can rotate around, taking a look at the connection in a little more detail. You can see for the results, here are all the criteria for the design control, the governing load combination, maximum demand capacity ratio, and the result, if it passed or not. Why don't we take a look at another connection here, if I look at this in 3D view. Let's take a look at the base plate. So for all results form, they provide detailed information about the selected connection included a table that summarizes the results of the computed limit states and a button to generate a detailed step-by-step -step report for a specific load combination. So if we select this specific combo, we can take a look at the summary and zoom out a little bit. We can take a look at the specific output reported for each one of these specific connections. In this case, giving you material and geometric properties, anchor rod information and position, and it gives you a view of the connection itself. Just a quick note about the demand capacity ratios. So determination of the controlling demand capacity ratio for each steel connection indicates the acceptability of the connection for the given loading conditions. So these include factored forces, which are determined for each connection location, nominal strengths and controlling material thicknesses are calculated for various criteria based on equations, as well as factored forces and material thicknesses are compared to nominal strengths and limiting thickness to determine these DC ratios. Uh, for more detailed information, we have a manual included, which can be found underneath the help menu, help, documentation, steel connection design, and these are the two codes which are available to the user currently. Also, for more information, please visit our website, csiamerica.com. Thank you.